Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now. Take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. We've spoken to Mike before. He's a runner. He's a fast runner. And listen to the second part of his story. I know two years ago, something special happened. Not something positive, but... I would say very, very unspecial. A couple of years ago, I began having trouble holding food down, which was a very weird thing. And in my mind, I, I kind of dismissed it as, oh, there must be some kind of blockage there, but that's no big a deal. And when the problem increased, I, I decided I ought to go get tested to, to see what was going on. And unfortunately, what they discovered was an extremely large tumor situated at the junction between my stomach and esophagus. I knew the outlook wasn't good. The, the doctor who had run the test that I had taken was said to me, you know, don't worry if it's worst case scenario, it's going to be treatable. And I looked at him and I said, doctor, for worst case scenario, you're sure going on a long time about it. I kind of suspected the worst at that point and subsequent tests proved that it was it was cancerous, which was really upsetting to, to say the least and not a fairly aggressive kind of cancer. It was messing up with my ability to eat. It was messing up with my ability to run. Prior to the diagnosis, I had noticed that my running that summer had been getting slower and slower. Cancer has an impact on one's metabolism. So I would imagine that having my energy kind of consumed by the tumor was slowing me down and my race results were, were showing it. I embarked on an aggressive form of treatment, which consisted of chemotherapy and then a combination of radiation and chemotherapy and then surgery And along with this, and, and following the surgery also, an experimental immunotherapy treatment. That was all difficult, but not as bad as I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. One of the things that really helped me is I wanted to keep my life as normal as possible. For example, I, I worked every single day. I didn't take a single day off from work. The radiation was 28 days in a row. Sometimes I had to run from my office and, and cancel appointments. I work all the time. And I did my best to keep running in my life because I love running. Secondly, because now I had an excuse for running slow. So nobody could ever <laughs> you know, criticize me for a slow workout. But also because in my reading, I found that maintaining strong aerobic health is very important in fighting off cancer. I came across studies which showed that if you maintain a certain level of aerobic strength, if you worked out, let's say, I'm forgetting the, the, the numbers, but let's say 15 hours a week of strong aerobic strength, mortality rate from all causes, including a recurrence of cancer, went substantially down. I was running for, for that as, as well. My running did slow. My capacity to run six miles became five miles, became three miles, became two miles. But I continued to do it as much as I could. Among other things, really helped me, I think. There's no doubt that my really good physical condition helped me to get through the treatment. I'm sure. In the treatment, they were constantly testing you, doing blood work, EKGs of your heart, everything, because if the treatment was knocking out too much of your white blood cells, for example, if it was suppressing your immune system too much, they would stop it. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, they would want to restart it later, but they would stop it or they might diminish the amount of radiation you got. Mm -hmm. They might diminish the amount of chemotherapy you got. I didn't want them to do that. Whatever their protocol was, 
I assumed that was the best to treating my cancer. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want any physical difficulties to cause them to say, sorry, Mike, we can't do the treatment this week. We'll have to postpone it for for next month. Mm -hmm. And they never did. The treatment went exactly as the protocols called for. And I ascribe a lot of that to being in really good shape. And I ascribe most of that to my running. Mm -hmm. So for all of those reasons, I kept up my running during the course of treatment. Mm -hmm. I think that's fantastic. You share a lot on Facebook, but also the Facebook, the writing has helped you. Maybe share a little bit about that. And I mean, we knew like sometimes we were not able to visit you, but at least with the Facebook, we were able to be part of your journey. To whatever extent it made you feel part of my journey, I'm really happy. But what I'm especially happy with is that I felt that you were part of my journey. I, I began writing as soon as I knew what was going on. Like I said, it took a while and a number of tests before they could confirm that I had cancer. And then I wanted to find out how I would be treated. And I went to two places before I settled on Memorial Sloan. Once I knew what the treatment was going to be, that's when I began writing. I wrote extensively. I, I wrote every day, every few days. Being able to share what I was going through was extremely important to me. I was able to write out the pain and I was able to write out some of the scariness. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would joke about it. I could use the humor sometimes to diminish the terror. I'm kind of exaggerating now. I didn't feel terror a whole lot. I only felt it a little bit. I felt it whenever they gave me a test and they told me, well, the CAT scan shows, you know, and then my heart would stop and I would feel terror. But the CAT scans always showed good progress. But those were the only times that I really felt terror when I would get CAT scans and PET scans mm -hmm. to see how I was doing. Mm -hmm. The treatment scared me, but they were never that bad in terms of side effects. Mm -hmm. But I would write about it and people would react to it. Mm -hmm. It's not that you were just sharing it because you were reading my words as much as I appreciated that. But you and many others would react, mm -hmm. even if it was with just good luck or you're handling this well. Some people shared their experiences, mm -hmm. which really meant a lot to me. And I will say to anybody out there listening to this who is struggling with cancer, if they would like to talk with me about my experiences and how it relates or might relate to them, I would be more than happy to. And you can certainly friend me on Facebook and get to read all about my running and stuff. I, I would be happy to to share with you in your journey. That's very the nice heart. of you. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. Thanks. No, but it's it's also part of my therapy to be able to give back yeah. and to share. You know, being in the immunotherapy trial, while I did it because hopefully it could help me, there's also a good chance that it wouldn't help me because, mm. you know, it was experimental. But I thought that it was it was it was meaningful to me to be part of something that could possibly help other people in the in the future. And so far, it looks good. It, it looks not, not just with me, because who knows if the immunotherapy helped me in particular, mm. but the overall results with all the participants in the immunotherapy for this kind of cancer, which, by the way, is a very rare cancer, is promising. So maybe I'm part of something that could save people's lives. Well, that's nice. Thank you for sharing. And for the listeners, I also want to say what came to my mind when reading your posts, there was always a lot of positive optimism and the humor. I mean, even if it was like you write about terror and you're afraid, you're like, oh my God, he's afraid. There was always like a glimpse of hope and laughter in a way. So I thought that was very beautiful. And I want to mention that. So thank you so oh, much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I mean, I've always felt hopeful. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it, it was really scary. The first oncologist that I saw, I didn't, I didn't stay with him. Who was, he was a perfectly nice guy, but I said to him, "So, what are my chances?" And I didn't expect that his answer would start with the word 40. And when I heard 40, I thought to myself, "Okay, he's going to say 43 percent chance, but not for you." Because you're in such good shape, the actual odds are blah, blah, blah. He stopped at 40. I, and honestly, I don't remember if he said 45 or 42 mm -hmm. or 48. All I remember was it was less than a 50% survival rate. That was a really scary, scary moment. So why I should have been optimistic, 
I don't know, other than I said to myself, well, my conditioning is going to make it less likely that I'm going to have a bad result and more likely that things are going to going to work out. So it's interesting that I've always felt optimistic, but I've always felt optimistic. My last question for the audience here is, when is the book coming out? Can you write a book about it? Yes, I, I can, but not before I run a race, not before I run a 5K race faster than my last 5K race prior to diagnosis. The surgery changed my, the inside of my body because it had to remove a portion of my stomach and a portion of my esophagus. So things were pulled and stretched mm -hmm. so that part of my stomach is now behind my lungs, which limits the capacity of my lungs to take in oxygen. In addition, the radiation therapy probably left scars on my lungs. Mm -hmm. So one day I said to my surgeon, will I be able to run as well after all of this is over mm -hmm. as, as I did before? And he said, no, no, you won't be able to because this has added um, mm -hmm. 10 years to your body. I've been out to prove him wrong. I've been out to prove that it didn't add 10 years of aging to my body. The last race that I ran prior to all of this, and keep in mind, the cancer was, the unknown cancer at that point was definitely slowing me down. Mm -hmm. It was my worst 5K ever, and I ran it at a pace of nine minutes and two seconds. I have to run faster than nine minutes and two seconds now, okay. and I've only gotten to 908. So I am writing no book until I can get <laughs> extra six sessions off my time and get under 902, and then I will have an ending to the book. Okay, we're waiting for that. Okay. I'm sure it will come. I'm sure it will come. So thank you so much for being optimistic and sharing your story and sharing it with others. Thank you so much. And BD, recovery, I know you fell. Maybe just take good care of yourself and run faster. I will keep trying and thank you for all the good questions. <laughs> Very inspirational. Thank you, Mike, for sharing your story, your journey, and good luck with everything. We want to hear from you when you achieve your goal and when you write the book. Take it from the Iron Woman. We have episodes every Monday, every Wednesday. Don't miss out. There is something for everybody. And Take It From The Iron Woman is also a book. Get it on Amazon as a paperback or an ebook. And coaching for you is available. Now is the time. Sign up. Reach out and subscribe on your favorite podcast channel.